Hello, it's Scott Manley here once again with Jebediah flying over the surface of Minmus on a rocket pack. Um, Jeb is not one to let things go, so he has come back saying he knows how to do it. He really can land on Minmus and return to the craft using just the fuel in the rocket pack. So the entire team came up this time because, well, Bob really didn't believe him and uh, not only doubled, but he uh, tripled the bet if um, Jebediah can manage this landing. So I've cut a little out here. We're basically descending towards the surface this time to uh, minimize the amount of fuel. I'm aiming for a high spot and uh, I've put the spacecraft into a, a sub 10 kilometer orbit. That minimizes the amount of energy that's going to be needed. And then aiming for a high spot on the surface of Minmus means that we also have slightly less potential energy. I mean, the, the mountains on Minmus are four or five kilometers high, which is like, you know, eight, nine percent of the radius, which is actually a significant amount of potential energy involved there. So by going for a high, high mountain, we're reducing the energy required. Now, if you're doing this on a spacecraft, you have to be careful because Minmus is, of course, very, um, the, the terrain is very irregular. But, you know, one thing that's really good um, about legs is that they're actually very adaptive to all sorts of surfaces. So I feel pretty confident that I can land um, Jebediah and have plenty of fuel left. So as you see, we're coming in a little fast here, working as fast as... Um, Trying to trying to retro burn, um, basically going backwards. But I think I'm gonna come in a little hard and oh, wow! It's a good thing that kerbals are tough. What did I say about uh, human bodies or bodies being a great shock absorber? There we are, seventy percent fuel left. That only took thirty percent fuel. Oh, although um, I guess we caught the edge of a rock there. I might have to slow the fall a little with the rockets. One of the things that sometimes happens is that. The, the rocket pack tries to stabilize itself and ends up just burning fuel. When you see that happening, if you're trying to save fuel, it's, it's better to turn off the rocket pack and turn it on until it figures out what the correct orientation is. You see that I've, already, I've, I've wasted even more fuel by doing this, but that's okay. Now it's back to ragdoll mode. We've uh, <laughs> gained quite a bit of altitude, but um, I'm sure uh, Bill and Bob are laughing if they can watch this on TV. Bob is no doubt saying he's never going to do it. You know, after all, he has a lot at stake these days. You can also see uh, the Earth, or sorry, Kerbin, and the moon. And just above there is the sun. So yeah, we're just going to come down and uh, just going to apply a little more rocket force to you know, burn a little more fuel to make sure I don't bounce another time. Because really, this is a kind of embarrassing for a professional pilot like Jeb. I mean, he'd be prepared to take that just to win his bet, but it's he just wants to show that he can actually land. Oh, well, maybe the next time. <laughs> this is quite possibly the worst landing of Jeb's career, but it, he's still alive because, well, <laughs> he is uh, the toughest little spaceman there is. It'd be great to have sound effects on this. Oh! Yeah, no, I don't think, I think I'll maybe have to get one of the kids to do that. That's us, we're on the surface, and uh, I wonder how much, 61% fuel remaining. So, assuming that that bouncing didn't save us, you know, 20% fuel, we should be able to return to and rendezvous with the ship. Of course, if that's not the case, we can still perform a rendezvous with the, uh, using the capsules engines. So here we are, 61% fuel. We're now uh, looking, there's the sun and the Kerbin and the moon. Those would be a great, um, those would be a great visual cue, but I'm going to use the beacon on board the spacecraft. So uh, wait for it to come across the horizon. It's there somewhere, I know. Thankfully, we can time warp at whatever speed. Rocket pack is ready. There it is. So we're going to wait till it gets to, uh, I, I think I'm going to aim for about 10 kilometers. It's, it's kind of hard to judge. Um, you don't want to go too early, you don't want to go too late, because you really want to just pop up exactly where it is. I'm also going to line up the beacon with the middle of Jeb's body so that I can uh, use that as my kind of 
or orientation for the camera. There it goes, 20 kilometers, getting really close. 7, 6, 15, 14, 12, 11, 10. And okay, we are getting ready to go. There we go. Now, we're going to burn backwards. Jeb is using the fully vectoring thrust capable suit. This is great this way because he can actually look out and see where the spacecraft is. However, I'm switching to the map mode. I have not yet done this in full on less mode. At less being the lunar escape system where you basically pick a time to launch, a time to burn at various burn vectors and when you follow your checklist, you magically end up in orbit. I have an orbit like that planned, but it varies depending upon the altitude you're at and various other things. This is going to be a, an instrument-based approach. Yeah, although you don't have the instrumentation in the suit, you um, the orbit display is great, and you can mouse, mouse over Jebediah to see his velocity so that you know whether you've matched velocity. Now, it looks like I may have left this a little late, and I'm basically going to pop up directly underneath the capsule. So my goal here now is to get up to the 200 meters per second orbital velocity uh, so that the capsule doesn't run ahead of me. And the problem with that is that as I accelerate, my Apomin is going to go outwards, and so I'm actually going to be thrusting downward to, to, to keep myself in a tight orbit so that I don't fly past the capsule too quickly. I'm going to have to burn that fuel at some point. Might as well burn it now. They're getting close. I'm 100, 194. I mean, really, it looks like I'm directly below this, but it's really hard to tell until uh, I get close. So there we go. We're almost to orbital velocity, but I'm, again, keeping killing the, the vertical motion a little to try to circularize the orbit. We're also uh, 7.5 kilometers, and this is orbiting 8.5 kilometers, so should, we should be within 2 kilometers of this thing. There we go, 1.5 kilometers on the nose. Okay, so this from this point on, I think I can probably just do a visual approach. Uh, using the altitude and various, I have 20% fuel left. Now, if this starts to get a little hairy, I think if I get down to like 10% fuel, then I'll probably abandon it because um, if you're rendezvousing with a capsule, you want to get in close and then still use the rocket motors to perform the rendezvous. It's it's kind of it's practically impossible to adjust the, the motion of the rocket so that the the pilot end, or the EVA, the astronaut, ends up floating onto the ladder. So having a little bit of rocket fuel left in reserve will uh, ensure that the, the rendezvous after a rescue is still possible. But I, th I think I with a budget of that and just being very careful, I can totally do this. So as you see, we're approaching very slowly. Um, 10.8 kilometers. This is basically going to be about four or five minutes of me just trying to adjust this very slowly. So yeah, I was talking about less. Remember, um, this is part of my series, the real world Kerbal Space Program, where astronauts basically were, were come, they came up with an escape system for astronauts that could fly off the moon. And it was, you've heard about guys putting helium balloons on lawn chairs and kind of floating around. Well, imagine putting a rocket on a lawn chair and trying to pilot your way off the moon. No steering, just kind of leaning left and right to adjust the center of mass. That'd be awesome. I still haven't figured out how to, how to do that with my balance board. But uh, maybe one of these days. So here we are at 8.2 kilometers. We're definitely coming in at a nice rate, um, maybe two or three meters per second. That should get us there within a, a few minutes. And coming up towards the altitude, and um, well, just coming up slowly, one point seven kilometers. Jeb, of course, is single-mindedly driven by the prize he awaits. Not only will his he win his bet, but. Uh, he will uh, finally have proven his point to uh, Bob, the unbeliever. Bill apparently uh, did declined to take him up on this second bet. He was happy to quit while he's ahead. I think he secretly believes that Jeb is capable of doing this because, let's face it, we all have faith in Jeb. 
Now we're within 500 meters. I mean, you know, soon we're going to get in close enough that the the distance indicator will disappear. But, um, okay, coming and we're slipping sideways a little. One of the hardest things is to get the inclinations matched. Um, because you can't really steer it. The, you can steer it using, well, you kind of slip left and right to end up to adjust the, the inclination. But it's very hard to get it on the nose, especially since when you land, you don't end up exactly exactly lined up with the orbit. And, you know, you could technically um, adjust the view and watch the overhead passes and walk under the orbit, but that would take forever. Here we go. Look at this. This is practically spitting distance. This is 100 meters. There are some rockets that are smaller than this distance. You could... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, the landing gear is still deployed. And it's pointing downwards, and uh, yeah, for a joke, I think I think Bob's trying to uh, spoil his chances. He's put the ladder on the far side. There we go. Look at this flying past at some speed. Oh, got to slow down. There we go. Uh, yeah, but uh, he has been unable to retract the landing ladder. Something in the geometry makes it impossible. No matter how hard Bob has tried. <laughs> Still using that aero spike. That's a. I find that's still a pretty great engine when you pair it with the, um, with the large tank. It gives you like so much endurance. There we go. Look, this is this is awesome. Oh, he's also going to have to climb in ass first. No doubt, another joke. Yeah, twelve twelve percent. I didn't even get into my reserve. I'm bored. And there we are! And of course, Bob is struck. He is horrified that Jeb has managed it. He realizes he's going to have to pay out a whole a huge amount of Kerbal dollars. And no doubt, clean Jebediah's uniform and medals. Because, you know, Jeb probably has hundreds of medals for being the most awesome astronaut in the entire universe. I am Scott Manley. I will see you again sometime. Fly safe.